What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I got some uh, some more powder coat paints in. I'll share with you what I got. Uh, I also got some hooks. I already put those out in the garage to make some jigs. So by golly, today we're gonna be doing a fun little uh, making some ball headed jigs. One step closer to making that patented Randizzle finesse jig. I can't wait to finally get that dialed in. But today I'm gonna go out and mess around uh, out in the garage again. Stubby's here with me. Stubby, you can't come out and help. Dogs can't make jigs. Anyway, let's grab my safety gear. Uh, I got some lead wipes too, D-Lead. There's a special wipe uh, that you can get that actually neutralizes, takes away all the lead. I got that for wiping down my work surface and stuff. You can't be too careful. So let's go out, look at what I got, talk about the mold and do mold jig stuff. Okay, just turned on the jig melting pot, my lead melting pot. Uh, while that's warming up, let's take a look at the new paints I got. I ordered a few. So I got some watermelon flake. Now what's funny about this is I ordered um, a small toaster oven. So this is a little toaster oven I was telling you about. You want to get one of these because you have to bake your jigs to actually seal that paint on the outside of it. So it makes a, a really hard, nice coating. My wife's like, why did you order an easy bake oven? Really? Really, honey? We're going to try cooking some of these after and see how they turn out. We're going to kind of do the whole process. So anyway, watermelon red flake. I got copperhead, which is like a coppery brown with like some flake in it. So that should be pretty cool. I got black with blue flake. Of course, one of my favorites around here. We have those craws that'll get those kind of blue pinchers on them. So definitely gonna make some black and blue. Good old root beer. Root beer is a favorite color. I used to throw that when I was younger. It'll be interesting to see what kind of root beer color. Seems like different places have different versions of what they really think root beer is. So I don't know. I got a nice matte black. So instead of being like the real shiny glossy, it's gonna be, you know, matte kind of a, a dullish black color some matte watermelon to go with that. We'll see how different this is from the, the matte green pumpkin that I already had. And last in here, uh, copper mine. So I think this is gonna look more like a shiny copper outside. I wanted something brown. I think this was about the closest I was gonna get. It was between this and the root beer. So we'll see, um, just you know, some colors to play around. I'll probably get some brighter stuff later, but I went kind of with the more natural colors. That's usually what I throw more in the jigs, but as we go, I can always get some more of those. Now, as far as hooks, um, I ordered a few different kinds. So I had to get the hook that would fit the do it, the actual ball head jig mold which is this guy right here. I think I showed you last time, but it's got a ball head. So this is gonna give us pretty close to those War Eagle finesse jigs that Randizzle loves. He got me turned on to them. I don't think these will have as heavy of a hook. We'll have to compare. I haven't compared the hooks yet, but um, I know there's there was a special thing in there that said you can't use like the heavy wire hooks with this mold. So I think there's some people that like modify it, but those are just the little regular round bit hooks I got. Then I got some of the regular round bin victory hooks as well. They're all just the regular round bin. This one's a little different. Um, it doesn't say what it is, but it was a little bit different bend. Kind of like that V-lock or J, I guess, more kind of deal. I don't know, I figured we'd try those two, mess around with some, see what Randizzle likes. Uh, I'm excited. I love the little ball headed finesse jigs. We can do what in here? 5 16th, which is my favorite. He likes 3 8 uh, And then there's also a 7 16th. I usually don't throw that heavy from the bank. Um, but I'm excited. Let me throw my uh, my safety gear on here. I don't know how bad this is going to smoke. I'm just going to wear my full mask thing. I know some people said last time you don't really have to worry about the fumes. It's not going to be hot enough to actually boil it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm older and I have two kids now, uh, but I feel like you can't be too safe. So this way I don't have to wear my safety goggles. Everything's enclosed. I'm going to put this on and uh, do some work. And I'll put the camera on me and we'll, we'll do jig things. And It's still melting. It takes a while. <sighs> Fish and friends, I'm your father. Ah, oh, you think Cinco's are your allies. The mold on top of the lead and let it warm up that way. It's pretty dang smart. All right, like I said, we've got three different sizes of finesse jigs. I'm going to try shooting that first one, that 5 16th. Pretty easy to do here. Just going to take our hook, stick it in that deal. The little hook deal fits in the slot there. Make sure you hear the click. You can, you can tell I'm a first time jig maker, huh? Didn't even think about it, but I need those little iron things where my uh, <laughs> where my weed guard goes. Good, good work there, Devo. Okay, so backing up a second here. I took my mask off so you can hear me. I forgot we have to put these, uh, these silver deals in that are gonna save the hole for our weed guard. I'm actually gonna do the 5 16th and 3 8 So these little deals go in right here. Oh my gosh, right there. 
And that's what's going to keep our hole for our brush guard. So the, the lead's going to pour around that. It's going to pour around the hook. And that little silver thing there, it almost looks like a dull nail right there, that guy. That's going to keep the hole where our brush guard goes. Didn't even think about that. Obviously a noob. Okay, take two. I said I was going to do both there, 3 8 and uh, 5 16 but let's see if this even worked. By golly, it looks like that worked to me. So there's the silver thing that stays in there, so I should be able to just wiggle this. Okay, so you can see that came right out nice and clean. That leaves a hole there where our brush guard's going to go. Just cut off that sprue, just like we were doing last, last time. There we go. We have the start of a finesse jig. Let's make about, I don't know, 50 more. Cool, looks like both of those came out well. So I had to break these open. These are the heat resistant fiber guards. So what these are, you have to put that little fiber guard inside there so that keeps the hole open. That way when you dip it in that powder paint, that powder paint gets all hard on there, um, you've got that heat resistant fiber weed guard to keep your hole nice and open so you can put your brush guard in there. So, all right, Fisher friends, as you can see, got all the jig heads dipped. Man, those turned out sweet. I've got all kinds of colors, matte black. This root beer color looks sweet. Oh, no, wait, that was the copper something. This is the root beer. It was almost more of a, like a purpley color. That's going to be cool. That was that uh, green pumpkin purple craw that you saw. That's the matte green pumpkin. The other was matte watermelon. That's that green pumpkin with that blue iridescence in it. That old watermelon red. Love it. Okay, so now I need to take all these deals out. That heat tube thing that protects the hole. That way you can see you've still got a nice open hole there for your brush guard. Now I need to load all these in the old easy bake oven and figure out how long they need to bake for. Yes, bake you beautiful little jigs, bake. Okay, just got done doing some stuff inside. This has been sitting for a while, so these are all baked and cooled now. Man, how sweet is that? I'm gonna take all these out, put them on a deal, take them inside, and let's go talk about skirts and weed guards. Isn't that fun? All right, fishing friends, just got inside. Check that out. Look at all that good jig goodness. <clears throat> I'm gonna switch this over and turn it down on the track one so you can see it, but Everything's baked, hardened. Now we have to do the whole skirt thing. I'm gonna show you a couple different options. Um, as much as I lose jigs, I think it is kind of justified. Uh, you know, if you lose a lot and you go through a lot of them just using pre-made skirts versus tying your own skirts. I've never done that, but let's talk skirts real quick. All right, this is gonna be my skirt station. This is actually my um, fly tying deal, but I don't see why this wouldn't work for doing skirts too. So for example, I was gonna show you some colors. Um, That's that matte black color. That turned out super cool. Now on the front, you'll notice there is a little bit of a bump where I uh, snipped off that sprue. I didn't bother like sanding it down or filing it. I didn't want all those lead shavings all around. I really don't think a one, 54th inch of a little knob there you can see that's all it is one little itsy bitsy tiny thing is going to matter at all now maybe if i was selling these um but for me and randizzle we're going to burn through them quick enough it's not going to matter the black and blue turned out pretty cool i did notice that the eyes on a couple of them were shut some of them were fine some of them didn't shut that black and blue was shut though but Look at that, that sparkly blue. Root beer was not what I expected, but I like that. That's probably my favorite one out of the batch, just because I thought it was gonna be like more of a brown, but it's almost like a reddish, purplish. So there's the matte green pumpkin versus the matte watermelon. The matte green pumpkin is the darker one. Matte watermelon is a little bit more greenish, whereas the green pumpkin's a little bit more brown. Both of them look cool, I like that matte look. There's a couple of the watermelon red flake that we did. One's got a little bit more red flake on it than the other. Um, I did start dipping these twice, so I dip it one, put it over the heat gun to kind of smooth it out, and then dipped it again. I like the way that looked better. And then last, the ones that you saw last time, that green pumpkin with like that purple iridescence, and then the green pumpkin blue, which is like that blue craw look. Both of those look really neat, and I think those are new colors from whatever that powder paint is, I forget. Okay, so of course we've got the, uh, the weed guard that has to go on. I'm actually going to do that last. I don't know if that's like a... Uh, a no-no and jig making, but I'm gonna save it and do that last. I got some black and some green pumpkin. Now, as I was saying, you've got a couple different options when it comes to doing skirts. So like these skirts I got online, they're already done. So you can see it's like a green pumpkin with the blue on it. It's got the uh, your little rubber band thing there that holds it on. The, those have a couple little holes for rattles if you wanna put them in. But that's a pre-made skirt, so these are super easy. I'm gonna put it on this one that has the blue pumpkin already. I want that blue to go down on the bottom. So I'm gonna take this like so. Thread it through, wiggle it on, 
Oh yeah, that's backwards, duh. Thread it on this way so the blue is on the bottom. Move it up. Now you could trim this beforehand if you wanted to. I like to leave them on like when I change skirts like this with pre-made. This is all I've ever used is pre-made skirts. Just so you can kind of see exactly where it's going to be. So first it goes up over the soft plastic keeper and you can see on these there's like a little nub there, a little round nub. Let me push that over it. It should go all the way up tight snug to the jig head. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like. You can see there's still a whole bunch of skirt on here. These are gonna be finesse jigs. So I'm just gonna bunch this all up and cut this. So I cut the front like so, so you can see that kind of spider finesse jig cut that we're used to. Maybe trim that up just a little bit more. I missed one. There we go like that. So the front looks like a, a spidered up finesse jig and then the back of it, you'd really just cut however short you want it. Uh, I'm gonna cut it really just even with the hook. Okay, and I cut it like this from the bottom to kind of give it some different angles so it's not just one straight cut across. And that's it. That is a done jig. I just need to add that weed guard on there. That's how easy it is when you buy the pre-made skirts. I don't know about you all, but I think that turned out pretty cool, that kind of green pumpkin blue craw. Mixed it with, uh, this is like an Okeechobee almost looking craw deal. That turned out pretty sweet. I like those. Those are those victory um, hooks that I got from Do It. It's got like that V, v shape in it, cool. Okay, let's talk about tying the skirt now. Uh, it's actually a couple days later. Uh, so when I was first tying the skirts, I don't know if I can find it, but I was only doing one layer of wire around. So a lot of folks when they tie it, they'll use like a 22 gauge copper or stainless steel wire. That's what I got and it's been working well. The mistake I made first was when I was wrapping my wire around I only did one wrap around the jig and when you twist it to tighten it, I'm going to show you that here in a second, it was cutting off these little, uh, you know, the rubber deals of your skirt. So I actually started wrapping it three times. I cleaned up my wraps. Uh, they look a lot better and I practiced on, I don't know, however many is here, I think 30 from the first batch. Um, I actually just got in from the garage and made a few more so I can show you these and tie some right now and uh, kind of tell you what I learned. Okay, so the first thing is we have to pick out our colors. I'm just going to grab one of these matte blacks. These are nice. And we're going to go with some uh, a tab of these. Now, depending on how much or how thick you want your skirt uh, is going to depend on how many of these little tabs that you get. So you can see on each end of these skirts, the tab is together, right? So that end, everything's together. That end, everything's together. And depending on how you do it, you can get different looks when you tie it and such. Now, from me going through, I've been able to cut these in half. Uh, and use two of these halves to do you know different things with the jig. So for example, I'm going to show you. I'm going to cut this guy in half. Gives me two tabs close to the same size. And I've got another black skirt here. So all these are from you know you can get in multiple places online. We I, I ordered from Do It. They've got skirts there. Skirts. Uh, what's it? Fishingskirts.com is another one. Some people talked about that's got a ton of skirts. But pick up some skirts. Find some colors you like. And I'm going to use three halves, okay, to make this finesse jig. So I'm gonna take my ball-headed finesse jig, and I didn't put my uh, weed guard on yet. I'm gonna do that last. Now, like I said, I don't know if guys usually put it on first or last. I don't know, I've been doing this and it's worked. So take my two lighter tabs on bottom like that, and I'm gonna make it so the tabs are just up above the ball head. You can see that's still enough skirt that goes back behind the jig. That's what I want anyway. I don't want a big, huge, long, skirt back there. I'm going to take that all black tab and lay that on top. Now I need to get a little piece of wire. Okay, so I'm just going to put, cut a piece off like that about, I don't know, six inches or so, five inches. And I'm going to start on the bottom. And what I found is the easiest is when you start on the bottom, I'm going to take that wire and put it right next to the back of that head. And I'm going to bend this up kind of in a U shape. Then I'm going to take each of these sides and bend them over so they kind of meet on the bottom so I can see where I'm at. I want to make sure my wires line up together so I'm not getting pieces in there. So you can see I'm taking that wire and laying it right over right next to that other wire so they all lay down right nice right next to each other. It looks nice and neat. Okay, so I leave it kind of loose. That way I can adjust any of those skirts as needed. So like I said, I want the blue on the bottom, black on the top. That looks good. Now one big thing I've learned from doing this is I also want one more wrap. So I want to have three total wraps here just like that. So when you look at this from the top, you can see I've got three wraps of the wire going around. And these wires are going to be on opposite ends. So when I have the ends coming up like this, they're going to be on opposite ends of those wires. That way when I crimp this down, it's crimping down on that wire and I've got three different rings of it around there. Uh, instead of when I started was doing just one, it was just cutting all my skirt off. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and pull this tight down at the bottom like that. That way all those wires are tight, pulled nice together. Then I'm just going to twist this. And as I'm twisting this, this is going to twist those wires together and make it really tight. So it holds everything on there nice and snug so my skirt doesn't fall off. 
Okay, and that's what it looks like. You twist that all nice and tight. It snugs right up against that. Didn't cut any of my stuff off. You can give your skirt a tug just to make sure everything's tight, but that is cinched down nice. So, I'm gonna take my wire cutters and cut this off so I don't even know how, how long that is. Quarter of an inch, maybe, I leave on there. And I like to have it on the bottom. That way I can just take my pliers or nippers or whatever and just use that to bend that wire down. And once you get it all pushed up in there, it's pointing backwards, so that way anything you drag it over, you're not gonna get stuff caught up on it. And when I move this skirt all back and put my soft plastic on, the head of my soft plastic is actually going to go up on there and keep that hidden in there. That way it keeps it nice and put away and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, I've got three tabs to trim up top now, so I'm just going to kind of grab these, use my scissors. Man, these scissors are so handy. And just trim those off. That way I've kind of got that spidery looking front end. So there's one, two, and three. There we go. That is a hand-tied custom Debo finesse jig. Black on top. Light blue with some black stripes on the bottom. That's it. I mean, it's, it's super fun, super easy to do. Now, like I showed you before, if you don't like that, um, you can always get into these already pre-made skirts. You know, that's an option too if, because I was kind of thinking about that. You know, it doesn't really make sense to hand tie these when Randy and I will go out and literally throw two pitches and you lose a jig. So I kind of got thinking on that and wondering, you know, a lot of companies will market a hand tied jig and that's great because you're not going to throw it out and you know get it caught on something a little bit and have that that skirt pull off but at the same time um, if you're fishing around a ton of rocks it might not even make sense to hand tie these just find a skirt that you like that's already made and you can do the same thing with these skirts that are like this that are open um, you can get these rubber collars and I have a skirt tool. This thing here, Do It sells these uh, on their website, but you put the rubber deal up on here, you put all your skirts on that you want inside there, and then slide that down, and you're essentially gonna end up with this. So then you could just put this rubber collar deal on a jig like that and leave it, and you're done. So I guess it's kind of up to you if you're making them for your own use and you burn through them quick. Maybe you wanna go with that. Um, if you're selling them, I know a lot of people like that, and once you get good at it, it really doesn't take a lot of time at all, but it um, does look fancy once you get it all done. Okay, next up is the process for getting your brush guard on to make sure this is a weedless jig. Um, I'm going to use some epoxy. I've got 30-minute epoxy. This is what I use um, on some of my lures to put the clear coat on. makes a nice, hard, clear coat, but it's an epoxy, so, man, you can stick stuff together, and it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to use epoxy. I suppose you could probably use super glue and stuff, but because I have this and I know it holds stuff so well, that's what I'm gonna use. Got a wooden tongue depressor deal, mix it all up. Now, you could also use um, like a heat gun to warm this up a little bit. Makes it nice and runny, but I'm not really that worried about it. I think we're gonna be fine here. Okay, and this part's super easy. I'm just gonna dip my weed guard down in that epoxy, grab my finesse jig and pull all the little strands back there. Take this, and this is the exact same size as the hole. Push that down in there like so, and there you go. I've got a little shop towel close by. I'm just gonna take this, wipe off the residue before I let it go, like that, and that's it. I've got a jig that's all done. It's got my weed guard on there. I would let these dry overnight, just to be sure. And that's it, you can see on these, most of the eye holes on those you can see stayed open. Some of that first batch, some of them didn't. I don't know, I'm gonna have to mess with that, but that is all, all there is to it. It's a lot of fun. It's very addicting. Once you start doing it, you're like, okay, now what co other color skirts could I get and mix and match? But a lot of fun. All right, fishing friends, that's the process of making finesse jigs from start to finish. I know, something's a little bit different, right? Finally got rid of the hair. But anyway, comment below and let me know what you think of these series. Do you like seeing the, you know, the DIY, making your own jigs and tackling stuff? I have been having a blast with it. I mean, you can make some really cool stuff depending on what sort of skirts you get, the way you match them up together, a little green, punk, and purple. I've got some black and purple that turned out really neat. Heck, I even did some, uh, some red and orange. I know that's big right now coming up in the spring. Maybe we can catch some on these. But I want to share some of these with you all. So comment below and let me know if you like these. Um, if you'd like to have some of these little finesse jigs, uh, Randizzle got me turned on to them. Uh, you know, especially if you're somebody who's new at jig fishing and you just don't have confidence in a, a jig, a finesse jig is an amazing way to start out. They catch fish, they catch numbers of fish, they catch big fish. 
Uh, you know, it's just not intimidating. I, I think a lot of guys think of a jig and they think of a big, huge mop jig with a huge trailer, but not the case with these. Throw a little trailer on and you can catch all kinds of fish, Debo Dinks included. But comment below, I'm going to pick somebody and give you a handful of these jigs, so hopefully you can have some luck uh, and catch some. And just let me know your feedback, what you think of them, how they fish, that kind of stuff. But uh, otherwise, if there's any other tackle type making stuff you want to see, comment below and let me know. Now tonight's subscribe fish and friend is, well, Randizzle, by golly. Hopefully, uh, Randizzle can get over here. We're going to mask up, try to make some jigs, and uh, hopefully we can have a Randizzle specific certified. He picks the hook, the guard, the colors, and everything. I think that'll be pretty fun, but uh, enough for me. I need to get all this put on the computer and finish editing so you can see this tomorrow, but uh, thank you all very much for watching, and until next time...